We are here right now at the Emirates Festival of Literature with the one and only world's best-selling author. He's written fiction, non-fiction, short stories, and you can see them in over 100 countries in over 40 different languages. I can't even think of 40 different languages at the top of my head. I'm with the one and only Jeffrey Archer. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know half of the languages that your book is printed in? It's... Uh in 47 languages in 121 countries. Um, so you have been the only author to have been number one bestseller in fiction, short stories, and nonfiction. If I were just beginning to write, would you say one of those is easier than the other? No, 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 no. If you're talking about number one on the New York Times, no, or number one on the London Times, no, that it's very difficult. And I consider it a privilege and an honor to have done those three. Uh, to young authors coming up, I do 14 drafts of every book. I rise at 5.30. I work 6 to 8, 10 to 12, 2 to 4, 6 to 8, go to bed at 9.30, get up the next morning at 5.30. As I said, I do 14 drafts, a thousand hours on each book. There is no shortcut. If you're a storyteller, if you're lucky enough to be a storyteller, it's still damned hard work. I'm sure it is. So it's, it's not something that you do whenever you're inspired. It's a full-time job. Ah, that's two questions again. Because the answer is I always, recently I've known what the next book is. So I'm ready and prepared for it. But yes, once you've got the idea, in the case of Princess Diana, an incident that happened in her life, did it happen or didn't it happen? Because I knew her, of course, and had the privilege of working with her. So I know that if it happened or if it didn't happen. So before I sat down to write that, I knew that. But it doesn't take away from the fact you have to work very hard indeed. People say, think they, an Irishman once said to me, oh, you've ruined my life, Jeffrey. I said, I beg your pardon. He said, you've ruined my life. I thought I would write the great Irish novel this weekend. And I, wonderful sense of humor the Irish have. And <laughs> no, it's hard work. Absolutely. Now, you said in one interview that you're first and foremost a storyteller. Would you say storytelling is an art form that anyone can learn? Good God, no, you not a hope. <laughs> what, pop down to the local store and say, I'd like a packet of storytelling, please? <laughs> no, I am not a countertenor. I am not a violinist. I am not a ballet dancer. I'm a storyteller, and it's a God-given gift. Now, you can be a fine writer if you're well-educated and you're well-read. Of course you can. Storytelling is a God-given gift. And how would you say have you used this gift in your day-to-day, -day, other than, of course, beh behind a, a pen and paper? Is it something that you think has been useful, say, with your day-to-day -day life, when you're speaking to other people or you're working? Well, when I work with people like you, I like to believe that they're, <laughs> when they hear me speaking, they can believe I'm a storyteller. <laughs> yes. So, yes, all the time. All the time. I take advantage of it. All the time. So, so one more question for you. With more and more authors every day, especially now that we've got things like LitFest that are inspiring more yeah. authors, uh, what one advice would you give people so that they can stand out and maybe hopefully one day be a bestseller like you? Do you know, the honest answer to that question is the public will decide. Thousands of books are written every year. Just occasionally, I remember my whole life changed. I, I wrote a book called Cain and Abel, and my whole life changed overnight. A million people bought it in the first week. 47 million people have now bought it, and 100 million people have read it. If you'd said to me, when I handed it in to the publisher, is this the breakthrough? I would have said, well, I know, no, this is the next book. So it's the public who decide. And one book goes flying through whole world is reading you can't decide I got lucky 
Do you really think it was just luck? No. <laughs> no. I, I, but I was shocked by the sheer, the sheer numbers. Yes. Uh, you know, 100 million people have read Cain and Abel. I mean, <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Luck isn't, luck isn't, it's a tiny, tiny part of it. But the more important, answering your question more seriously, the public will decide. Absolutely. Now, since speaking of decision, what made you decide to write a children's book? I know you wrote three, right? Mm. Well, because my own children were at school when Cain and Abel came out. They were seven and five. And uh, they kept coming home saying, everyone's talking about Dad, Cain and Abel. Uh, and they were obviously five and seven. They were too young to read Cain and Abel, so I wrote three books for them. Uh, Willie Visits the Square World, Willie and the Killer Kipper, and by royal appointment. I wrote those three books uh, for them, and they're the only children's books I've written, and I enjoyed them immensely, and I read them to them, and they said, oh yes, that's an author. Uh, and, and, but then they asked me if I would stop coming to pick them up at school. And I said, why do you want me to stop coming to school? They think you're out of work, Dad. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my goodness, but how different was it to write a children's book versus all of these amazing well, books that you've already it's written? it's a different world and it's not my world. I did it for my children uh, and uh, it was fun to do it for them. I, I'm, a, I'm a, a novelist. And is there a one last word that you'd like to share with our viewers right now about joining things like Emirates Lip Fest or, or anything that you'd like to advise for people who still want to learn about being an author? There's no shortcuts. It's damned hard work. And it's a very great honor and privilege because people forget it takes six hours to read a book. You're saying to someone, give me six hours of your life. The young nowadays are lucky to give you six minutes. So I am no doubt that it's a great honor and privilege that millions of people take six hours. And the answer to your question is no, I will not give you one word, I will give you two. Thank you.